Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on the Shiloh Village quest. Now, for this quest you're going to need the following requirements. So you must have completed the Jungle Potion quest and the Druidic Ritual quest. And for skills, you need level 4 smithing, level 20 crafting, and level 32 agility. That's it for the requirements, now on to the items. You're going to need a bronze wire or a bronze bar, both you can buy from the Grand Exchange. You need three normal bones, um, again you can obtain these from the Grand Exchange or just kill any sort of like human or anything, They're most things just drop the standard bones. A anti-poison in case you're poisoned by the tribesman but you may not end up using it at all, it's just as a precautionary measure. Uh, a rope, a chisel, the one on your tool belt will not work for certain parts, you need an actual physical chisel in your inventory. Uh, a lit torch, uh, and it can't be any other light source and you will lose this item, but just sort of the standard uh, torch. Now, um, a few of those items can be bought from uh, Jim and Newer's Jungle Store, uh, which is the general store located just near the Karamja Lodestone, just in in case you guys don't know. And you're gonna need some food and combat gear to fight a level 53 Nazasteral, um, which first appears as a zombie, then a skeleton, finally as a ghost. Um, but overall, not too challenging, but just obviously bring uh, the best armor and weapon you can and a fair bit of food review as well. So that is it for the requirements and items, now on to the quest starting point. So we're currently at the Karamja Lodestone which can be accessed via the Lodestone network. Now if you don't have this one unlocked and wish to unlock the other ones as well, I have a guide which can be found in the description below and it's well worth having full access uh, just to speed up the completion of quests. So the quest starting point is quite uh, far from here, but this is pretty much the quickest way to get here for uh, the main majority of you. There are other ways um, to get closer if you have access to a nature altar teleport, or you have the access to a spirit um, grok, you can teleport to the jungle hunting area. If not, most of you will be going this way. Um, but the quest starting point is literally just outside Shiloh Village, which is quite a fair distance southeast from us. Um, so just watch where I'm going, and I'll lead you to the quest start point. So once you finally arrive, you want to speak to the man outside called Masol Ray, and he'll instruct you to run for your life. And when you ask for a reason, he says that the village has been overrun by zombies, being commanded by the Queen of the Dead. Uh, offer to help, and he shall direct you to True Fetus, uh, an elder of the Tybro One-Eye Village. After you agree to this, he will give you a uh, wampum belt to show to True Fetus, um, which will translate what is happening. So we need to head to True Fetus, I'll tell you what, his, his name is very annoying and I've done this in Jungle Potion, we're just going to refer to him as Tutti Fruity, just to make it easier for me for announcing. Um, but to get to Tutti Fruity's house, it's easier just to go back to the Karamja Lodestone again, so using the Lodestone network, go there now. And now once you're here, you want to head to uh, Tutti Fruity's house. Um, those of you who've done Jungle Potion recently should remember uh, where he is, but at least you want to go there and then use the belt on him uh, to show him what is happening. He will say that things look very bleak and the key to breaking the spell may be found in the temple of Azarun, but there is almost no clue for finding it. Uh, now you want to pick these following options to actually find out what to do. Say that you will look for the temple and once you affirm your intent to uh, search, gather every information on the temple that you can from him, so basically ask everything. You'll find that the name Azar Rune translates to Magnificence Floating on Water, indicating that the temple may be found on an island. You must choose the conversation options that includes declaring your intention to search for the temple and True Fetus will hold the wampum belt until you return. Unless he holds the belt, you will know uh, you will not know what you're looking for once you reach the temple site. So uh, until he takes the belt from you, you obviously haven't asked the right options. So just go through everything if you find it's uh, not working. Now the temple is located on the eastern section of Karamja, uh, just east of Shiloh village, but we need to go across the river which requires 32 agility. So we're going to start heading to the river now, uh, which is in the direction east to us. And once you reach the river, you want to keep going south until you find the um, agility shortcut log. Once you travel the log, you then want to keep following the river south until you uh, reach a giant mound of earth near the waterfall. Um, again, you can look on my screen to know exactly what you're looking for. Once you're near it, you want to search the mound and click the option to use your spade to dig it up. And then you want to light your torch and use it on the fissure to illuminate it. Once you've done that, you want to add a rope to the fissure and then search uh, and then secure it. And then you'll search the fissure again to climb down in the temple below. And again, 32 agility is a requirement. 
So after entering the dungeon, you'll encounter some aggressive level 44, 46 undead ones. If you do kill the ones that look like zombies, a cloud of harmful gas will hit you for minor damage. So it's best just to sort of ignore them. Um, just an optional thing here. With a chisel, you can retrieve a stone plaque from a strange looking stone near the round pond, um, which can be sold after the quest for 100 gold if you're bothered. Um, but literally, you want to go near where the round, pod, uh, round pond is, and what you want to do is look around the wall, west, uh, western side, and you'll see a smashed table and nearby will be a cave-in and you want to search the cave-in to crawl through. So in this second cavern, which is an N shape on the minimap, you want to look for some rocks at the top of the uh, first part of the N uh, and search them to get a tattered scroll. Uh, you may fail and get hit for around sort of a few life points, um, but continue searching until you obtain the scroll. Uh, once you then go diagonally through the cavern, you'll uh, be near a small room and you'll find some sacks that you can search for a crumpled scroll. And at the very end of the last uh, arm of the cavern, you want to do the look at and then search the gallows to get uh, Zadimus's corpse. Uh, if you don't look at first, you will be hit uh, consecutively by green gas. So very important you do the look option first before searching it. So once you've made sure you've got those items, you then want to teleport back out. So again, quickest way is to go to Karamja Lodestone. And then once you're back there, you want to return to Tutti Frutti's house uh, to give him the items. But first thing, you do want to make sure you read everything you have obtained um, before using the items on him. So once you're back at his house and you've read all of the scrolls, you want to show all three items to him by using each one on him. And Tutti Frutti will say that the corpse must be buried on sacred ground, uh, one of which is located in their backyard next to his, uh, just next to his house. So if you go to the tribal statue west of his house and bury the corpse, um, you will have Zadimus' spirit appear and he will tell you that he has the key and quickly departs before handing you a bone shard. You want to take the bone shard back to Tutti Frutti and show it to him and he'll tell you to look for Berevius's tomb. Now for this next bit, many people uh, do find they don't get the option to climb down the stacked rocks in this coming up part of the quest and this is because uh, Tutti Frutti has not told them to look for the tomb so what you need to do if it doesn't work is read both scrolls, inspect the bones and then show the items to, uh, to Trifetus and don't leave until he has suggested that there might be something useful in the tomb so just make sure um, he has actually kind of told you that in the dialogue. So we now need to head to the tomb, um, so from where you are now you want to keep heading southwest to reach Khan Isle uh, and then you want to climb up the rock slide and uh, cross the bridge to reach the Khan Isle. Um, now you can fall and take a lot of damage but the useful trick here if you have the ability to do it, um, there's a magic ability called Surge which teleports you forward about 10 spaces, um, so what you can do if you have the level to use it, use Surge and you'll go across the bridge uh, without uh, risk of falling down, so it's a handy little cheat to have. Once you're on the island, search for some well-stacked rocks in the northern part and choose to climb down them. Uh, you may fail a few times uh, taking some damage, but keep trying. So you'll find yourself in another dungeon, though this one is much more smaller, and what you want to do is go to the dolmen in the south end of the cavern and search it to get a sword pommel, a locating crystal, and Berevius's notes. So we want to exit the tomb and return to Tutti Frutti, uh, again quickest option will probably be to use the Karamja Lodestone and head back to his house. Once you return to him you want to read the scrolls and then show him everything that you obtained and he says that you need to make yourself a necklace to be uh, protected from the uh, spirit's powers. So this is what you want to do now, you want to use a chisel on the sword pommel to make bone beads. Uh, like I said, the tall bar won't work for this, you need the actual chisel in your inventory. And then you want to use your bronze bar on the anvil to make bronze wire, unless you've already got it uh, with you. There is an anvil just north of the village. And then finally you want to use the wire on the uh, beads to make the beads of the dead necklace. And you're now ready to take on the witch queen. Uh, before you leave, make sure you show the necklace to Tutti Frutti just so he confirms. So now we need to go back across the river that we uh, went over earlier on the eastern side of Karamja. However, this time when you cross the agility log, we're going to be heading north instead of south. So you're looking for some uh, hidden double doors um, and you'll find they're near a guy um, called... 
uh, tied each um, and literally if you don't see it at first turn your camera around you may find that you've got the camera facing the wrong way but you'll see a set of double doors um, they will appear locked at first but what you need to do um, as Zadimus mentioned about having the key you want to uh, use your bone shard with your chisel to make a bone key and now you can go through the doors with the necklace equipped to enter the tomb. Now if you don't have the beads of the dead necklace on when you enter the dungeon, uh, Rashalia's ghost will appear and attack you, um, dealing low damage and then will send the undead ones after you as well. If that does happen, just kill them like you normally would um, and avoid their harmful gas and then you can proceed through the main game. But it's easy just to make sure you've got the beads of the dead necklace equipped beforehand and that won't happen. So once you enter the dungeon, you want to climb down the rock slope and then you want to head sort of southwest uh, and eventually you'll come up to some ancient um, gates um, they have uh, skeletons embedded on them. Um, now what you need to do is use the three regular bones you had in your inventory on these doors. Now be careful not to bury the bones by mistake, make sure you right click um, otherwise you're going to have to re-obtain bones to open the door. Once you've used the three bones on the door, it will now be open. Um, ensure you're wearing the beads of the dead and then you'll um, want to prepare for battle um, by going inside and searching the dolmen. So you will be attacked by Nazasteral, a level 53 zombie. After you defeat him, he'll turn into a level 53 skeleton and after you defeat him, he'll change once again into a level 53 ghost. Now even though it has three forms, you shouldn't find the uh, boss overly difficult, it's not exactly the strongest enemy. Um, just again, watch your life points and just do your usual uh, attacks, whether you prefer to use melee, mage, range, whatever. Once you defeat the ghost form, you'll be given a corpse of uh, Rashalilia, uh, how you want to bloody pronounce it. <laughs> um, now, when you take the corpse, never drop it, otherwise the spirit will thank you for releasing her, and you'll need to go back to the tomb and kill all three of the forms again, so keep it safe in your inventory. So what we need to do now is teleport back to Karamja Lodestone using the Lodestone network. And once you're out of the dungeon back at the Lodestone, head to Tutti Frutti's house to show him the corpse. So showing the corpse to Tutti Frutti, he'll tell you to think that perhaps there's a clue in the items you have. Um, so what we actually need to do to finish the quest is to take um, the corpse to the tomb where we found the um, bone shard and sword pommel, etc. The one on Khan Island. So you want to return to Khan Island like you did last time by heading southwest, climb up the rocks and using the bridge. Again, you can use the surge ability to get past the bridge to save you uh, failing it. Once you search the rocks to climb down into the tomb, you want to go uh, to the dolmen and use the corpse on it and uh, the spirit will appear and thank you for letting her rest in peace, saying that Zamorak tricked her and returned her son as an undead creature. After you've done that, she will finally disappear and it will come with congratulations, you have completed the Shiloh Village quest. You are awarded two quest points, 3,875 uh, crafting experience, access to the Shiloh Village cart service for a fare of 10 coins to and from Brimhaven, um, access to Shiloh Village. Uh, after completing the quest, you can sell every item you obtained uh, for some coins, which I'll show you how to do at the end, uh, just to save throwing them away for nothing. Uh, you'll have access to the gem rocks in Shiloh Village, two treasure hunter keys, two hearts of ice so yeah overall not really a hard quest just sort of long winded a lot of traveling around and obviously uh, you have to go through quite a lot of dialogue options to make sure you go through the quest properly which is a bit annoying but as long as you do everything that I said uh, you shouldn't have any problems now like I said a minute ago all the items you obtained during the quest like the quest items uh, you can sell them uh, to a person in Shiloh village uh, I think you get about 2k coins total which isn't a lot um, but at the end of the day it takes about five minutes to go to the village and it's better than just flipping uh, throwing away for nothing you might as well get some coins out of it um, so what you want to do if you want to do that is go to Shiloh village uh, where the quest start point was and this time you can actually go inside so I'll speak to you in a minute uh, for those of you who don't want to uh, see that bit thank you very much for watching please make sure you like favorite comment subscribe and share with your friends anyways so, if you're after selling the items, uh, once you're outside Shiloh Village, go through the uh, two sets of gates uh, to get in, and then what you want to do is go find a man called Yanni Salika, uh, who is in a house with another quest star symbol on. Uh, this is the one where you can start one small favour quest, um, but basically you want to go inside the building and use each of the items on him, and he'll basically offer you a set of coins for each item, and um, once you've sold all the items to him, you should have made about sort of 2k, uh, 2K coins total. 
So yeah, that is everything for this quest and that. Uh, I don't think you'll get stuck at all. However, if you do run into any problems, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best as I can. If not, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you like, favorite, comment, subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Cheers guys, bye bye.